Welcome back to Winning Flag Football. I'm your host, Coach Art. You know, sometimes I just like to talk directly to you about what looks good on paper doesn't necessarily look good on the field. I've drawn up some beautiful diagrams for plays that just flat out don't work. So let's talk a little bit about how you can recognize when a play isn't going to work on the practice field. I had a play once drawn up and it was a beautiful play called center slide. The center actually takes one step forward and there's twins on the right. This is in a six man, but you can do it on seven man. In a seven man field, let's say you've got two receivers to the left, two to the right, quarterback and a shotgun, a center and a blocking back. You can run this to either side. It's one of my very favorite plays. In fact, we would always start each game with center slide. And the only variation would be whether we ran it to the right or the left. But the idea was to have the center just take that one step forward and kind of scrape down the sideline, angling very shallow, to give room to the receivers on either side to cut straight in towards the middle. So they'd come in on kind of a hot route. Uh, on a 45 degree angle straight off the line. They were really just clear outs. They were there to pull defenders and pull zones out of the way so that the center could slide underneath those clear outs and give the quarterback a very easy target and have a lot of garbage that defenders would need to run through in order to get to them. And it worked like a charm. It's a perfect pick play. And it doesn't really look like a pick play because um, the receivers are kind of far away from each other but it functions very much like a pick play. And when you've got somebody in, say, man coverage on the center, typically they're going to line up head up. And so they're already out of position because as soon as the center takes that one jab step in the correct direction, they've got position. And if the center has any uh, any wheels at all, they're going to stay in that position. So all the quarterback has to do is deliver the ball on time and on target. So we ran this thing in, in practice, and again, it looks fine on paper, and it looks great on the field, unless the players don't really understand why the lines are drawn the way they're drawn. We ran this a few times, and I had kind of introduced it, but we hadn't practiced it a ton at that point, and the center kept running into the clearouts, and we ran it three or four times, and it kept happening. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? So I finally had them explain to me what they were doing. And the center was actually going too deep. He was running more of a slant from the middle. So it's almost like a flag route at that point. But he was ending up 8, 10 yards downfield. When at the end of his route, I really wanted him to be more at the depth of about 3 or even 4 yards. So once I explained to him, no, it's one step. And then you jab right or left, depending on the call of the play. But it's one step just to make that defender who's covering you freeze. Then you can kind of bounce the way that you need to go. And he goes, oh, okay. And we ran it again and ran it to perfection. So that's one of the things you need to consider is how the lines on the page are communicated to the people running those plays for you. It's really important to explain why a piece of the play is the way it is. If the route runner doesn't understand what they're doing and they're just trying to follow the squiggles on the page, you're ultimately not going to get the right results. Yeah, they might be uh, running the path that you want them to run, but there's a lot more than just the direction. It's the timing of it. When do you arrive at a particular location and where are you looking? Uh, comeback is another really good example. So we ran a play called X Comeback, and in, if you can imagine it had a flanker, let's put him on the right-hand side, and the flanker would run a 14 back to 12. So it ended up being about a 12-yard hook but to the outside which is why it's called comeback so it was right on the sidelines where we'd use it and the quarterback would be in the shotgun and take the snap but actually roll right hard the uh, a back our blocker was on that play side and would actually take the defender inside they would basically open their hips and give them the inside position it would encourage the rusher to actually take that inside pursuit that kind of um, lining up tight that we've talked about before because it's the most direct avenue to the quarterback without realizing that while the ball is in the air and the quarterback's about to catch it, the quarterback's going to roll right 
and it's actually going to put the blocker in between the quarterback and the defender. So it was a very elegant design because the defense was being baited into a bad position, which gave us a very clean look when the quarterback would roll hard to the right. They would basically attack the line of scrimmage, and they would have the opportunity to either throw the 12-yard comeback, throw the deep flag to the center, who was 10, and then to the corner of the end zone. So he had kind of a high-low look, or he could just keep it and run it, because in our league, the quarterback could run once he was flushed out of the pocket. It was a very good play. It functioned a lot like a flood play, but without a lot of decision-making and a lot of moving parts. It was a very clean play. But that play requires everyone to understand why they're doing what they're doing. If the blocker assumes that they have to track to the right and maintain position uh, and, and, uh, you know, and actually slide to the right so they can kind of follow the quarterback, that is the wrong way to run that play because it telegraphs to the rusher that they also need to go in that direction. And now the rusher has a chance to get around the blocker and perhaps cut off that running lane, make that pass a little quicker, a little more difficult. So instead, making sure that the blocker understands to kind of open their hips and shoulders to the inside, give them an easy path to the quarterback, make it look like an error. And that way the rusher will rush right upfield and, and basically right into the trap. The other thing is the quarterback has to know that they need to sprint. This is not a light jog while they're sort of looking downfield, excited to select from a variety of open receivers. That is not the way this play works. You've got to roll hard and really sprint. It is a sprint out because you may convert that into a run. So you've got to get as much distance between you and the middle of the field as you can so that you can have enough time for the comeback route to develop, enough time for that center flag to develop over the top, and if you feel like running it, that'll give you just extra distance away from the trailing defenders. All of these things need to happen, right, in the, the right way. Even the comeback. The comeback has to sell a deep route. So that person's running 14 yards, cutting hard, kind of really breaking down and turning their hips and shoulders at a very awkward, like 135 degrees back towards the quarterback and towards the sideline. Not everybody could run that route. Once we found a, a young man who could run that route very well, that became his bread and butter. We could steal 10 yards pretty much at will by running X comeback. Um, the other thing is to, to surprise them over the top with that center. If you've got a center who's got wheels, then um, you know most of the time in my offense, the center was going on short drag uh, routes. And, uh, and so the defense became conditioned to see that. So when the center went deep, they sort of took the down off because they thought it was a clear out. So we were able to hit that deep a few times as well. But the only reason this worked, it wasn't because the lines on the paper were drawn well. It wasn't that the diagram was pretty. It's that everybody knew what their physical movements created in the defense that influenced the defense out of position and made it possible for you to get open. So those are the things you want to focus on in practice. If you've got diagrams, drawings that you are using, especially if you're using like a wrist playbook and you've got the squiggles written down, you really need to practice what each squiggle means and make sure that people playing those positions understand how their body movements need to influence the defender, where and when they need to be. It's not just the ball that needs to be on time and on target. It's all the other players as well. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week here on Winning Flag Football. Take care.